Welcome to Wisdom Flow Yoga Anatomy Sessions. I'm here with my buddy Stan, and we're going to teach you a little bit about the rotator cuff group. We're going to talk about two of the four muscles that are called the rotator cuff group. We're going to talk about the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. Funny names. Where the heck do they come from? Well, it's kind of helpful to understand the etymology, how the names were formed. This ridge right here on your scapula is called the spine of the scapula. So infraspinatus just means below the spine and supraspinatus means above the spine. And again, referring to the spine of the scapula. And let's first talk about the infraspinatus. It's less troublesome. So it starts on the whole uh, back plane of the scapula and then attaches to this bumpy point on the upper arm called the greater tuberosity. You gotta love these names. So the muscle wraps around and grabs right here the outer arm bone. So you can imagine when it contracts, it shortens. And so what it does for Stan is it gives him outer spiral of his upper arm. So it moves from here, that's my infraspinatus, rolling my shoulders back. And if you take my classes, you hear me say in Cobra, roll the skin of the outer shoulder back. I could just as well be saying, contract your infraspinatus, but it sounds better to say, roll the skin of your outer shoulder back. So the infraspinatus, one of the rotator cuff groups, it gives us external rotation, outer spiral of the upper arm bone. Now the supraspinatus sits right here. There's almost like a little dish that it sits in. And, and you can just, it's one of those muscles that feels, sometimes it's tender, but feels really good to press on. Now the thing about the supraspinatus that makes it a little bit um, troublesome is it snakes through this little hole. Maybe you can see my finger snaking through this little pile of bone. So the clavicle, the collarbone, meets the acromion process. That's this little bony protrusion off the spine of the scapula. And then this is the coracoid process, another wonky little curve in the scapula. And, and, and this muscle's tendon comes through this hole to attach to the top of the humerus head, the upper arm bone head. So when it contracts, it goes It helps us with abduction, lifting the upper arm. But the reason it's sometimes troublesome for us is because it shares this little groove with another big tendon that we use a lot, the bicep tendon, the long head of the bicep. Actually, Stan, would you face the camera? Don't be shy. So there's this groove right here that your bicep tendon passes through and also snakes through the same hole. So these two tendons, if this, if this little junction gets jammed up, like if the upper arm bone, if we're doing this a lot, because our upper trapezius muscles are a little ADD, rah, rah, and we do that because we get tense, then we sort of jam up the traffic flow in this little area and the tendon of the supraspinatus can get, uh, can get beat up and then it gets micro tears and then the micro tears get inflamed and there's more traffic jam in there and then we were like, I can't move my shoulder. So one of the best things to do f to support your rotator cuff group, first of all, keep them strong. So don't hang out here, hang out here more. But the other thing we can do is learn to use the lower trapezius muscles. So the lower trapezius, the trapezius muscles make a diamond shape, right? And we're really good at using the upper trapezius muscles. Oh my God, life's coming at me, right? We get all stressy. But we're not so good at using the lower trapezius muscles. And those are the muscles that are like, I have the courage to face anything, right? There's an energy behind all of these alignments that we make. So the lower trapezius muscles draw the bottom tips of the shoulder blades toward the spine and really activate the upper back right here below the heart. They help us stand tall. They help us integrate the spine into the body. They support our heart and they also free the upper traps. And when the upper traps are freed, Again, this little space right here that the supraspinatus tendon moves through, it can be kept clear and our shoulder can be moved more freely. So now you know more about these two muscles of your rotator cuff group, the infraspinatus, 
right here where my hand is, and it helps with outer spiral, outer spiral of the upper arm. And then the supraspinatus, attaching through this little puka, that means hole in Hawaiian, and attaches to the top of the head, and when it contracts, it'll lift the arm, right? So, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, now you know a little bit more about how your body works, and you can enjoy your practice a bit more. Thanks for tuning in to Wisdom Flow Yoga Anatomy.